Hello, everyone, and welcome to our Ventura TV. I'm Sandra Cepak. On today's show, we're welcoming Senator Hannah Beth Jackson. She is the representative senator from the 19th District here in Ventura County and Santa Barbara County. Thank you so much for joining us on the program today. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Uh, you know, Ventura County has had some tough times the last uh, year. Uh, we've had some wildfires going. We've had Montecito floods. We've had the recent Thousand Oaks shooting, which was horrific in itself. Uh, these are all things that are affecting constituents here in this area. Uh, the wildfires, of course, are a new abnormal in the state. So I'd like you to talk about that in particular right now uh, and the new bills that you've introduced uh, to address this concern. Well, we have seen over the past couple years in particular mm -hmm. these wildfires breaking out uh, at all times during the year, yes. not just during what we once th called our fire season. In right. fact, the Thomas fire started a year ago on December 4th, mm -hmm. uh, and at the time was became the largest wildfire in California history, yes. moving initially at a rate of uh, an acre a second. Mm -hmm. So it's not a lot of time to give people notice about what they need to do. And then, of course, we had the Woolsey fire and the uh, campfire, which killed at least 88 people. Mm -hmm. So these are very dangerous uh, circumstances. And w what uh, I have been trying to do, both in terms of my mm -hmm. capacity as the senator for this district, which suffered from the Thomas fire and then the subsequent debris, debris flow, right. but also as the chair of the Joint Legislative Committee on Emergency Management. Mm -hmm. I've had a number of hearings that I have been holding to take a look at what we can do, what we have to do, both to protect public safety when these fires break out, mm -hmm. and what we have to start doing to try to minimize or prevent these fires. So let's talk about the bill um, that uh, will ensure that for people, emergency response system. Right. We need to have that in place and it be effective and that it's going to be working properly. So that's SB 821, which okay. has become law now. And mm -hmm. that bill provides that law enforcement, which are those uh, yes. tasked with the responsibility of notifying us in case of emergencies, okay. mm -hmm. uh, allowing them to have access to everyone's information so they can actually warn them. Mm -hmm. Right now, we do have systems in place, but you have to sign up for them. They call mm -hmm. it an opt-in. Okay. Well, we've discovered most people are not signing up. Right. So what this bill does is it's going to sign people up and they have the right then to say no I don't want to be signed right. in, uh, signed up but it will sign everybody up by allowing law enforcement if they choose and this mm -hmm. is a county by county basis okay. I know Ventura County is very interested in doing this mm -hmm. signing people up so that they know how to contact them in case of emergencies right. the uh, and it's the only purpose for which they can use this information so we want to protect people's privacy right. give them the right to opt out but when there's an emergency People need to be notified as quickly Absolutely. as possible of what they need to do because to be Because time safe. is of the essence. You don't have a lot Absolutely. of time. You have to get out quickly. Absolutely. And so we this, saw is, that, this is crucial. We saw that in the campfire, they did not have that time. No. In fact, fully a third of those people apparently never got any notice of any kind. That's true. And we were very lucky here in the Thomas fire with the expanse of that fire and mm -hmm. the way it was moving that there were so few fatalities. That could right. have been a lot more. We want to make sure that doesn't happen again. Let's also talk about the bill that... Um, uh, has been signed, uh, SB 465, which is the Wildfire Safety Finance Act. Right. That helps a lot of people that have been through these fires. And I'd like you to address that a little bit. Well, what that bill does, one of the things we've recognized is that we build in areas which are prone to fires, mm -hmm. and even more so now with climate change. Yes. Uh, this bill will allow people who have not yet been impacted by those fires, but who could be impacted by the next fire mm -hmm. based upon where they live, to what we call harden their homes. That okay. means uh, to, to take away um, thatch type roofs sure. uh, and, and roofs that can burn mm -hmm. and to harden uh, the landscaping, if you will, and make sure that they have uh, windows that are less likely to blow out and fire to come in, okay. all sorts of things that they can do. allows them to access an existing program right. so that it can help them do that kind of uh, preventative effort mm -hmm. to protect their homes if a fire should come. Yeah, improvements uh, for resilient. Uh, they call it resilience, right. exactly. Okay, so that's really important. Um, again, uh, you're very committed to many of these policy solutions to, you know, reduce these risks of these catastrophic uh, fires. Um, I know that in, in, in doing this, uh, you must hear from a lot of constituents. Uh, does that 
get you motivated to do this more or what's behind it? Well, uh, the motivation actually is having represented an area mm -hmm. for which every ember of that Thomas fire burned. Yes. Whether it was Santa Paula all the way up to Montecito okay. uh, and into the back uh, Las Padres National Fire. I, mm -hmm. I personally witnessed that fire every day. I mm -hmm. talked with a number of my constituents who lost their homes up in the Andalando area mm -hmm. uh, who uh, were victims of the debris flow in Montecito. And going back and forth on a daily basis between my home and the fairgrounds where they had the uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the um, area where where the major operations were being conducted yes. uh, so I got to experience it firsthand right. but also talking to constituents there mm -hmm. was there wasn't anybody in my uh, district <laughs> yeah. who wasn't impacted by that fire sure. so uh, I've listened carefully to their concerns I've listened to the concerns of the experts one of the things that we need to do mm -hmm. is do everything we can to reduce the potential for these fires. Yes. The, 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 we have too much fuel, as they say. These, these trees, this brush, uh, it becomes really a lightning rod for mm -hmm. these fires, whether they're caused by human beings, whether they're caused by downed uh, electrical po uh, poles, whether they're down by lightning, it doesn't matter. What right. we have is an incendiary situation, which we have to reduce. So I did legislation also, mm -hmm. SB 1260, which is going to start creating better uh, management plans for both our forests and our uh, areas in Southern California where we have a lot of chaparral mm -hmm. and that are in what they call the wildlife urban interface. Okay. We like to build near these beautiful hillsides and they burn. And so this is a bill that's going to help us do right. controlled burns, do it in a way that's as safe as possible, uh, reference the concerns we have for air quality. Mm -hmm. So we brought in the experts, the environmental experts, the fire experts, the whole community uh, to be part of this effort and you know this is something as you mentioned that's going to be ongoing this is not something that just stops with the Thomas fire or the Woolsey fire this is an ongoing thing now as the abnormal uh, from what we hear from Governor Brown uh, so I think it's a good thing that you are going in this direction for many of us here well, you know, the first responsibility of government, my brother, the history major mm -hmm. and history teacher, reminds me is to keep communities safe, to mm -hmm. keep us safe as a people. Yes. And certainly uh, here in California, we're so subject to whether it's wildfires or floods or earthquakes, it really is, uh, mm -hmm. should be, and must be a focal point that we do everything we can through government, through working with the private sector, yes. through our first responders. Mm -hmm. These are government workers, and boy, do we owe them a debt of gratitude for Absolutely. their unselfishness and their willingness uh, to run in when we run out. That's right. That's right. Let's talk about some of the committees that you chair and, and some of the work you're doing with those. Um, Joint Legislation Committee on Energy Management. Let's start with that one. Well, this is actually emergency management, okay. and I mentioned some of the bills that we're doing. Um, th there's still a lot more to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I've introduced a bill this year that's going to tighten up uh, the alert the er, uh, early alert warning systems right. by expanding access for law enforcement to our okay. universities, to our cities, and including the wireless networks as part of this. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking more and more, there's a whole issue of what do we do with our utility companies? Right. You know, many of these fires, as we know, and as we suspect, were started in, in the uh, hills right. where these winds were whipping up, and that's where the, the various um, f poles are, the electrical mm -hmm. poles. They they collapse, they spark a fire, here we are. There's a lot that we need to do in that area. And of course, uh, we have now with so many of my colleagues having suffered through these fires with yes. their constituents. This is a statewide issue. It's actually a national issue mm -hmm. as we talk about the dramatic changes in weather. Take yes. a look at Houston last year. Mm -hmm. Take a look at the uh, incredible hurricanes that we had in the um, the panhandle mm -hmm. of, uh, of Florida, unheard of before. Right. Weather is changing, it's getting more dramatic. We need to change with it. We need to respond to this yes. and we need to try as much as we can Absolutely. to stop this before we have gone so far beyond the tipping point that there is no way to come back. I do want to change directions a little bit here and uh, talk about your work uh, introducing and, and having bills signed for gender equality. Um, the Me Too movement is so big right now. It's a, uh, a, a big thing here in the workplace. Sexual harassment is, is extremely important to a lot of people and the Me Too movement continues to affect a lot of people, very significant. 
Let's talk about your work in the gender equality area. Well, this has always been important to me. You know, in the 21st mm -hmm. century, we're finding that more women are in the workforce yes. than ever. And generally, we're in the workforce because we need to support our families. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to be paid fairly for the work they do, which is why I did my uh, equal pay bill back in 2015 to mm -hmm. make California the strongest equal pay uh, state in the nation. It's a, a template for this bill has been uh, used now by 41 other states to try to get equal pay. Mm -hmm. uh, we notice that when people are the victims of sexual harassment in the workforce, their ability to do their job and to optimize their capacities, right. their capabilities are impacted mm -hmm. by that terrible behavior. Yes. So uh, as part of this effort, I uh, did two bills this year specifically addressing sexual harassment in the workforce, mm -hmm. uh, trying to prevent it, uh, putting the burden uh, on those who are actually responsible for it uh, to, uh, to, to, to demonstrate that there isn't harassment in the workforce, uh, to try to clean it up so that we take very seriously when these incidents happen, that those people who stand up and speak out are protected yes. in doing so, that they're able to state a claim and go in there. You know, part of this is when you bring a lawsuit and a company is smacked with a big, heavy fine, mm -hmm. that's what they hear. They mm -hmm. hear the financial aspects. We have to do everything we can to reduce the impacts of this. We have to train uh, those who are in management, train those who are co-workers, and give women and those who are, and we do know there are some men who are harassed in the workforce, yes, the opportunity to step forward, mm -hmm. to speak out and be protected in doing so, we, so we can stop that behavior. Uh, I also did legislation that clarifies, you know, not all relationships are employer-employee. Okay. So I did legislation this year that recognizes, for example, the, the whole situation mm -hmm. in Hollywood with actresses. Yes. Uh, the situation in the Silicon Valley, mm -hmm. uh, women who are entrepreneurs who are trying to get the funding they need for their projects, mm -hmm. being asked to join potential what they call angel investors mm -hmm. at 11 o'clock at night in that angel investors right. hotel room in mm -hmm. order to, quote, discuss the issue and finding yes that they are victimized there, so that their talents aren't being maximized, mm -hmm. they're being discouraged from, from being able to uh, access the opportunities that they should have. So I did legislation on that as well that specifically mm -hmm. identifies investors, uh, directors, producers, uh, and also in the, in the political world. We right. are not immune from this kind of behavior with lobbyists. across the board. It's Everywhere. across the board, and it is Everywhere. not, and I try to remind people, this is not an ideological issue. This isn't Republican versus Democrat. Right. This is a gender issue, and we have to stop this behavior. So I've been very uh, pleased to be able to mm -hmm. be part of that. And then, of course, one of the, I think, most important bills yeah. I did this year was uh, SBA 26. And let's talk about that. That is a really good bill because California is the first state it is to adopt this bill. So this is a bill that has taken a look at the success of uh, c uh, corporations, yes. uh, major corporations, publicly traded corporations mm -hmm. throughout the country and indeed the world. And it identified that when you have women on those corporate boards uh, in meaningful numbers, mm -hmm. those companies are more profitable. Mm -hmm. They're more profitable, they're more productive, their governance structures are more transparent. Mm -hmm. They're a win-win both for the employees, the employers, and the shareholders. So I did a bill this year uh, that the governor signed that will require uh, corporations that are headquartered in California that are publicly traded mm -hmm. are going to be required now to add more to add women to their boards and by the end of 2021 uh, 21, if the board is comprised of uh, six or more people they're going to have to have at least two women and then nine or more at least three women good to hear and That's this great. is something we know is going to benefit these companies right. we hear pushback oh you know we're not we're going to throw any woman on but there are so many extraordinarily qualified women Absolutely. companies are going to benefit from this and I'm very excited California's led the way yet again good job on that one thank you I would like you to share your website with us? Absolutely. Um, all these bills and all the work I've done over the course of time mm -hmm. on a variety of issues protecting uh, our environment against offshore oil drilling, right. uh, so clean our, air, our clean water. Viewers can definitely take a look at There's these. a lot there, I hope, and I hope you'll be pleased with it. Good. Uh, SD19.senate.ca.gov. Mm -hmm. And you'll note Wonderful. I had to, I don't 
memorize the dots That's good. too we'll often. get it right on the screen. It'll and be good. Uh, I hope people will Terrific. feel free to contact <laughs> me. I love to hear from people. I love good constructive ideas. If you like what I'm doing, let me know. Absolutely. If you have something where you think we could do it better, please let me know that okay. as well. Terrific. Great. Thank you so much, Senator My Hannah Beth Jackson, for joining us on the show. You've given us some really good tips and information Great. on all that your office is doing. And thank, thank you, you for having me. Thank you. And thank all of you for joining us today on our Ventura TV. I'm Sandra Sepak. I'll see you next time. Bye, everyone.